Hey everybody, Scott Burnett here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to yet another video. Glad to see everybody here today. Even though I can't see you, I hope you're here. So I've started a series of videos for Home Lab. And my previous video, I explained what a Home Lab is. It can be a Raspberry Pi computer, a single board computer, a desktop PC, laptop, tablet, you know, tablet, um, enterprise 2U server. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what you want. Depends how much you want to pay. So I have a desktop computer that with a couple of drives and some memory, and I created a Proxmox home lab. So today I want to continue on tweaking the home lab, making it look better, making it run better, and get ready for our first virtual machine. So here is my Proxmox server. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to a website first called Proxmox Helper Scripts. Now all this will be in the description. There's all kind of GitHub projects for Proxmox, but this is the one I'm going to go with because they give you the tools to be able to really tweak and outfit your server or your plaything really good. So right here under Proxmox Tools, and we're going to use this website several times. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to the post install. So after you have your install done, you're on the web interface, you have your storage in there, this script will go disable the enterprise repo, correct the sources, enable the no subscription. So when, when you first log in, it's going to say, or when you log in every time, it's going to say, hey, you don't have a subscription. You need to go give us some money. Well, you don't have to. Not if you're just playing or having it at home. This will remove that and keep it from nagging you. Uh, this will actually update your Proxmox to the latest version. Uh, put any security updates on it and anything. So we're going to go right down here. We're going to copy this line of code right here. We're going to go down and in our PVE node, we're going to go to shell. Now you can't go to the shell over here. This one doesn't work because you're not logged in as root under it. So I'm going to do, I'm going to paste this in. Just like that. And it's going to say, hey, do you want to start the install script? You're going to hit yes. Hit enter. We're going to disable the enterprise repo. We're going to add, correct the sources. Yes. Enable no subscription. Yes. Add the test. Yes. Disable subscription. Nag. Yes. And now we're going to update Proxmox. Now, sometimes this takes a little while. Sometimes it doesn't. So we'll come back when this is done. All right, that took three minutes. So we'll go ahead and reboot, yes. And it'll reboot and get itself all put back together. And hopefully it'll come back online here in just a second. All right, it's back. It took about a minute. So, all right, we're good on CPU, good on memory, no subscription. So we'll go back to the helper scripts. And um, I've done all these uh, CPU scalings and edge kernels and really couldn't tell much of a difference just on a home server I do like this dark thing so what we're going to do we're going to copy this code right here for the dark theme it does make it look better go back to our proxmox go to our node and our shell right click and paste And what it's going to do, it's going to download it from GitHub everything it needs to 
make it dark mode and windows just looks better dark mode mac does too mac os looks better in dark mode so all right so it should be installed so we're going to hit refresh on the browser and there it is this is kind of a discord theme um i do think it looks better so all right so what i want to do now I want to actually upload a Linux ISO, Linux Ubuntu server. So you go to your ISO images and upload. You can download them from Ubuntu, Debian, Fedora, wherever you want to go from. We'll go over here to my folder. That's not where I wanted to be. Okay, I want the 2204.1 live server and we'll hit open and we'll tell it to upload. And it'll take just a minute for that. It's about a gig and a half, I think. And what we will do, we will go ahead, as soon as this uploads, we'll build our first DM and get ready to have a home lab. So y'all stick around. All right, that took a couple of minutes. So we now have a Ubuntu server ISO loaded. So now I want to go back to, I need to close this. There we go. I need to go back here and now I want to create my first VM, my virtual machine. And I'm going to create it and I'm going to do it on my PV node and it's going to be Ubuntu server. I don't have a resource pool, but if I did, it'd be right there. I'm gonna hit next. Oh, you can make it start up when you boot up Proxmox. I'm not gonna do that right now. Okay, my local storage is where my ISO file is. I'm gonna tell it that one right there. It's a Linux machine with a 5X 2.6 kernel. That all looks good. Uh, graphics card, this is a going to be a headless server, so I'm not going to worry about the graphics card. The machine's fine. You know, you could tell whatever, if it was a Windows machine, I'd probably go Q35, default BIOS. I don't need TPM. It's only going to have one hard drive. So I tell it to use the agent. That's for your reboot, start, stop. Uh, it says my storage. I'm going to tell it to use VM storage. You can tell it whichever drive you want, but I want it on the 250 gig. 32 gigs is going to be my storage. That's all I need. Um, we're going to tell it to use SSD emulation. That's going to make it perform a little better. And you can add drives. You can click add and you can add however many you want. But for this one, we need one. Okay, we got one socket. It's giving us one core. We're going to say we want two cores. That's our processing unit. That's how much compute we're going to give it. And that's all we need. We're going to go down here to next on our RAM. Two gigs is going to be fine for this. This is going to be a little test server. And we're going to hit next. Network device. And I've only got one in there now. We're going to virtualize it to an Intel E1000. That's been the best one for me so far. Uh, you can set all kinds of stuff. You can turn the firewall off and on. Whatever you want to do. And here's what it is. Two cores, two gigs, Ubuntu server, one network connection, 32 gigs. And we're going to hit finish. That is our first VM. If I click on it now, there's my hardware, my task history, then my monitor. But if I go to console, I can start it up. And now we can install Ubuntu Server. I can hit OK. 
we're going to go. This will let you do uh, snapshots of it. It's like a backup scheme that you have on servers. And one of the things that I want to talk about, I put two network connections in this server. So if I have more than one machine, I make sure I have full throughput back to my network by splitting each machine off to a different network connection. I'm going to hit OK, and we'll continue without updating. I'm going to hit Done. My Ubuntu server just joined the network. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Uh, you can give it a static IP address. I'm going to let it do the default DHCP address for now. We're going to format the drive. I'm going to let it do it automatically, 32 gigs. Hit done. We're going to hit continue. You got to put your name in. You know, it can be whatever name you want. Call it test server. My name and my super, super secret password. We're going to install OpenSSH server. This is going to allow us to terminal into the server and not have a user interface. And we'll be able to do everything we need to do that way. Now here you can install MQTT, Docker, databases. You can do everything right here. We're not going to worry about that today. And now it's installing Ubuntu server on our VM. Gone are the days of having to do this on a big, heavy server. So. Okay, it's done. Tell us reboot now. And we will let this thing reboot and come back up. It took uh, six minutes to do that with all the security updates. And this is what a Ubuntu server looks like booting up. So... All right, there we are. We are booted up, so we got very little load. There's our IP address, 10% memory usage, and a little bit using 31% of, what, 15 gigs? So there it is, tweaking Proxmox to look better and run better and make it easier for you, and then creating your first VM. Pretty cool, I did it in just in a few minutes. Even I can do it. It's not that bad. Now, one thing I do recommend is once you get Proxmox set up on your machine, let it run. Burn, what they call burn it in. Let it run. Do things with it. Restart it. Make sure you're up to date. Make sure it's stable. There's nothing worse than getting a VM created and, and starting out on your home lab experience and it start crashing on you. So make sure that it is ready to go. Make sure you don't have a flat tire, bad carburetor, something going on with it. But that's it for today. I hope hope you get something out of it. If you got any questions, let me know. I am not a, well, I kind of know about it. I'm not a know-it-all expert about it, but uh, I've done this quite a bit. I will find an answer of a question. If, you know, if I can't find it, I'll find somebody that knows it, so. But I hope everybody's doing well today. Uh, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell to be notified. Uh, check out all my videos. I try to do just a mess of everything. I'm just, I'm all over the place. But I get bored easy. So, anyway, I hope you're doing well today. I hope you're having a great weekend. And like I always say, until the next video, thanks for watching.